Fred Greetham, our uh, beat reporter from FoxSportsOhio.com, joins us. Fred, um, we talked before the press conference started the other day, did not get a chance to speak with one another after it was concluded. Your thoughts now that we've both experienced that, um, that stage performance? Well, that was quite an experience, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> it had a little bit of everything, and uh, I just, you know, I was really taken aback that they made a move so quick. I think, by, like a lot of people were, but you know, it's all said and done. It's his money; he can do what he wants, and uh, let's just hope they get it right this time. Fred, I thought it was one of the most intriguing, intense press conferences I've ever attended in my career. Yeah, it was because I think um, there's a lot of frustration even in the media. I mean. Their misperception is I think a lot of people think that the media is against uh, Browns and so forth. I think most of them have a background, you know, growing up rooting for the Browns and, and have a professional approach, but do obviously have an interest because if the team's good, people are interested in, in what we have to say or write or there's interest throughout the whole season instead of by the middle of the year everybody tunes out so i i do think that um there was some frustration because we were told a year ago that they were going to be stable and you could settle in that this was going to be you know uh, a group they were going to grow with and build with was pretty much the 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 message to everybody and and then everything just kind of went south real quick you know you brought something up that uh, uh brought to my attention uh, here uh the channel 19 reporter you just said that you know it, 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 management players uh, have a perception about media um for instance braxton miller down getting ready for the um, orange bowl uh suddenly came up with the flu uh the other day to and, and didn't go to the media session but the same day he's out swimming in the ocean with his buddies now you don't get over the flu that quickly i'm sorry uh there's a perception there is a, a guardedness there is a uh, um, an animosity from management management from players toward the media unfortunately I believe that partially that is the cause of what we saw at that press conference the other day from that Channel 19 reporter um, I do not believe there was a place for that kind of a plant and that's what he was Fred he was a plant he was ordered by his bosses to come off the way he did and by the way when Fred asked let me let me just give you a bit of information here you viewers when Fred Fred will ask a question at the press conference. He doesn't say Fred Greetham, FoxSportsOhio.com. I don't say Bruce Drennan, Sports Time Ohio, unless the team conducting the press conference requests us in the media to do so. But if you recall, Fred, that reporter felt obligated, oh, Action 19 News, Action 19 News, I'm not a sports guy, but I'm here talking on behalf of the fans. Who the heck is he to self-appoint himself to talk on behalf of the fans and when he called them the three stooges uh, I thought that was below the belt I thought it was tasteless I thought it was classless and I would also say this in all my years I'm in my I'm gonna be entering my 46th year in broadcasting of all the press conferences I've ever attended and participated in I do not recall a murmuring from the media, which occurred twice when he was speaking, that reporter from Channel 19, reactionary to what he was saying. Your comment. Well, I agree. It was totally inappropriate and it wasn't professional at all in that setting. And, and um, you know, one of the things is that typically there's about 8 to 10 to 12 of us that are there every day. And then, of course, because of this big gathering, the place is standing room only. And um, it's just, it was just a completely different environment. And I think part of it was because the lack of accessibility to Haslam and Banner and so forth. But but yeah, it was uh, it was a free for all, and and I hadn't experienced anything like that. Just had a caller a little while ago say that his belief is that one of these college guys, Mel Zahn or Freeman from Vanderbilt, will be the ones rather than a McDaniel's. I tend to disagree. I think McDaniel's is probably the guy they want most. What do you think? Well, here's my take, uh, Bruce. I'm going to connect the dots. 
If you remember back before Randy Lerner even announced he was interested in selling the team, Banner resigned from the Eagles, and there was a rumor shot down in Philadelphia that he was going to join a group that was going to potentially buy the Browns. Well, it was shot down. As soon as Haslam was officially named the owner, Banner was hired as the CEO. Right away, speculation was Mike Lombardi was going to be the general manager. That was all shot down. When it was all said and done, Mike Lombardi was the general manager. And right from the get-go, Josh McDaniel's name was the first one to pop up because of the relationship with Belichick, Lombardi, and so forth. And I have to keep going back to that. You connect the dots. I would be very surprised if he isn't the coach unless he turns it down, decides he wants to stay with New England and maybe succeed Bill Belichick up there. But I do think he would be the one. I would look at Malzahn and Franklin as kind of the Chip Kelly. I know that was perceived their top choice last year. Um, I also know that they're represented pretty much by the same agent, Right. That's representing several of these guys, and and when it's all said and done, a lot of these coaches end up getting big raises after after their names are thrown in the mix. I do think they may interview them. I don't know if they would turn over the keys again to uh, somebody that's never been a head coach before in the NFL. Uh, I just speculated that if McDaniels is the guy, and of course, a banner responded to a question at the press conference the other day if the new coach would be given more say so over uh, uh, football decisions, um, operational personnel, et cetera. And banner said, well, we are very close with the, we work very close with the coach. That tells me, Fred, that uh, that's his words of saying, no, they're very hands on. It wouldn't surprise me at all, again, because of a tie between Schwartz and Lombardi that Schwartz would be brought in here now that he's available to be one of the coordinators, the defensive coordinator, and a young coach like McDaniels getting a second shot after the uh, failure in Denver wouldn't have any say-so on his that part of his staff or perhaps how many other of the coaches. Well, that's, that's kind of the thing. They're painting themselves into the corner when you dictate. They say they're not going to dictate a staff, but if Schwartz you know, is already kind of like in the running to be the defensive coordinator, that means that, that the wheels are in motion there. You would think, and I, you know, I didn't get the chance to talk to you, but if, if you're going to fire Chudzinski, wouldn't you think that you would have already had something lined up, that you wouldn't take a chance on getting turned down by five, six people again and end up in the same situation that they were in last year where they took Rob Chudzinski you know, basically down the list on their candidates. I can hardly believe that they are taking that risk, that they don't have something lined up or had a pretty strong opinion that one of these guys is coming there and that's who they wanted. That's exactly what I speculated Sunday night after the game when we didn't hardly talk at all about the game, but this uh, story that leaked out, of course. Um, do, what do you make of the players, not so much Turner, who's on his way out, as we all know, uh, but what do you make of the players speaking out in the fashion that they are now that this is a, a done deal? I think I think a lot of it was they were caught off guard. Usually there's leakage that somebody's going to be fired or they're on the hot seat. And this really came Sunday for the most part during the game, and I don't think the players really even, you know, were, were thinking that because they were told they saw Trent Richardson getting traded after two games. They saw, you know, trading away your fourth round and fifth round picks for next year's draft choices. They saw the bottom of the roster continually being turned over. I think like all of us, we kind of thought this is a rebuild job that they're going to let Chudzinski grow with. And um, I think they're just speaking out of frustration. Um, when it's all said and done, the players will will do what the players do. They'll play um, if they're under contract. Now, the guys that are, un are not under contract, like Alex Mack and T.J. Ward, they can obviously leave and go elsewhere. But I think that they were speaking out of frustration and about out of the way they, they view this whole, you know, fiasco. Fiasco is the right choice of vocabulary. No question about it, partner. Fred Greetham, FoxSportsOhio.com. Have a good weekend. Talk to you next week, Fred. All right, Bruce. Have a great day.